a little different this week. Rather than me just sitting here in my pajamas. Ranting. Ranting and raving, I decided that I would get clothed this week and have a friend of mine come by. Um, the one and only Dom Irera, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Do you mind if I get undressed? Huh? No. I would feel more comfortable <laughs> doing this show. I like in the nude. In, in the nude. In the nude. Not in just nude naked. Podcast. In the nude. Well, I realize now, you know, like, look how much weight I've gained, right? Now, you know, I've gained, since I've known you, 30 pounds, right? And I know that. I can't and, tell. Well, you don't really look, you don't really well, check you, me well, out. You know what it is. Oh, dog, look at on. my head. My Come head on. is bigger. Well, you're wearing that slimming black T-shirt. I've got a, <laughs> a Barry Bonds head. <laughs> but it's, it's interesting because now, and I don't even know if this is a bit yet, Bill, but I think there's something in it. I have to look. I don't like women my own age. Right. You know what I mean? I can't. I can't fake that I get aroused by them. I always wondered that. No, I always wondered. I like, mean, I wish I had that kind of love or something. But I need like a hot young chick. But the only hot young chick I'm going to get has to be flawed. Right. I mean, she's got to be has daddy issues inside or, something. or outside. Yeah. Yeah. She's got to be messed up in some way. But that's what I'm looking for. How many uh, How many strippers have you have you dated? Dated? Uh, only a couple. I, I was in love with one. How old, How uh, old were you when you did when you made that move? Uh, two years ago, you fell in love with the stripper. I fell in love with yeah. Which, first of all, is this a country song? She was. I uh, fell in love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, she was not stripping at the time. She was bartending and just giving an occasional lap dance. Okay. You know, and really beautiful girl. I've been to that bar. And fun, but I tell you, oxycotton and alcohol really mess you up. Yeah. I don't know if you knew that. But, yeah, I got some. Uh, but I still love the girl. But she's. Uh, I don't think. I don't think we're getting back together because no, that oxy. Her is, husband uh, and her two kids. Uh, Keep blocking us. Oh, Jesus, Dom. You're making me feel good. Uh, You're making me feel good, some of the choices I made back in the day. Dude, Oxy is, uh, that's... It's, her it's heroin, right? Yeah, that's one of those things, like, like, even when you get off it, you're. I don't know that you're ever, uh, depending on how long you do it, the same. I lost a buddy of mine to that. Oh, shit, really? And I got another one. From, uh, he's not doing so well. Did you grow up in a neighborhood that was a lot of drugs? Um, Not like that. Not like that. It was, uh, I grew up, you know, it was... It was cul-de-sac bullshit it was weed there was the weed guy there was the bookie and then and then there was you know booze obviously but you know and some coke when you got older but uh like nobody was doing like heroin and crack was like you're out of your fucking mind because everybody thought if you smoke crack that was it you were done well they say you get addicted the first time that's what they said but i i got friends of mine who did and they're like yeah yeah, okay it was all right oh really yeah maybe they were addicted to other things they didn't have time to be. Hey, maybe they're just better people. Than maybe they're dog. better, stronger. You have good friends. Let me ask you this: If you had one drug that you think you would like, what would it be? I know what mine is. If you, if, if, you, if, if I could do a drug that if, I've never tried, you've that never I would tried, like. and you think that it, and like it's not going to have any repercussions, you just want to, the feeling. What feeling would it be? Oh, I, I not have a, tie. I have a tie. I have a tie. What is? I want to know. I want to know what it feels like. Like that train spotting where you sink into the rug. The first time you do heroin, that's and, exactly and, that's and exactly what I want. That, but I gotta admit the hallucinating thing, tripping. Yeah, but I'll. But that so, doesn't. Some, that, somebody told me like, so like when you're tripping, it's not like you don't know that you're tripping. You see the door fucking melting. You're like, oh, it's because I'm on acid. It's not like those high school films where you'd be like, <laughs> you thought you could fly and do right, shit right. like that, jump but, out uh, the window. No, I, I that I would think, scare I, the shit I out think, of me. Uh, what was that movie with that old guy? Was it something? Timothy, Timothy, Timothy Leary? Timothy Alan Leary? Arkin did a part where he played an old guy and he fucking, uh, he just he got addicted to heroin in like his 70s. And he's just like, what the fuck? I'm 70. That's a, actually a good idea. Just to try it at 70? I mean, I'd rather go out shooting drugs than go out taking, you know. Uh, dick in the ass? Dick, wait, wait, dick wait, wait, in wait. the ass, yeah. <laughs> that must hurt, man. That's the thing. You ever think about that seriously, Bill? When well, you think taking about one. It? Yeah, accepting one, I think. Taking it's one for the thing. team. Yeah, taking one for the team. All right, Dom, your number came up. Sorry. You're not going to like this. You're not going to like this. <laughs> I, job. I don't think so. I, I, could we work this out? No, I've actually thought Are about Are you really a priest? How I, how I want to go out. Yeah. In, uh, Eaten by wolves. Eaten by wolves. Shredded by animals. Yeah, I either want to live to be like 105 like you live so long that there's like nobody at your funeral because you outlived everyone yeah. who gives a shit or, no. you know, cause that, cause that, that is a funny one, image. Cause that's one of the things, if you live long enough, there's <laughs> I'm everyone, sure he had people that cared about. Oh it. yeah. Like people doing the eulogy. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, I met him when he was 87 and uh, you know, he was old. He liked, he liked playing cards. He always wore those slippers. He always wore those slippers. <laughs> but if, if you die, like, you know, like all my friends, 
you know, who have died tragically fucking young, it seems. I mean, you pack the house and everybody's up there yeah, crying. Yeah. You get a good... That's the only good thing about dying young is everybody gives a fuck. Uh, there's articles written about you. There, there's nothing worse when, I mean, there's nothing worse than dying young, but dying old also is, you know, you're sitting there and you got that fucking <laughs> old terrified picture. You, ah! right. <laughs> My <laughs> uncle Tony, it, when he died, he, he really was very prejudiced and very angry. But he also loved his children. He loved God. He loved mountains. And then when he died, it was so funny. Does that make up for the racist side? Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying he was that <laughs> he balance. He crosses on people. But <laughs> into nature. I love birds. But it's true, though. He was really like all that. Yeah. And he, and what, we're standing around the coffin. You see that mountain? It's for us. <laughs> That's for us, not these other people. This is God's country. But when we're around the coffin, we're standing there. You know how people lie about people after they died? And this guy, Lee Fidelli, who was the first Italian character I ever did, like I got down a little, uh, he said, we're standing there, me, a friend of mine is a priest, and like a couple of my cousins, and we're standing there over, over the body, and he goes, he never had a bad word to say about anybody. And we went from crying to fucking laughing. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I said, all he did was have bad words to say about everybody. And then he goes, listen to this, this is a really old reference. He goes, he never hated anybody except Larry Boa. Right, Larry Bowe, the old yeah, yeah. for the Phillies. Yeah, second and he goes, and he looks up. He goes, he hated that motherfucker with a vengeance, huh? Was he a gambler? No, he didn't gamble. He just hated him. He hated Larry Bowe because he hit one seventy five, but he was a great fielder. But I mean, how? Oh, yeah, what, a, yeah. what an obscure reference to make at a funeral. Uh, so in general, back in the day, he probably just didn't like second baseman. Right. Straight across Maybe the board. What, yeah. But I love that everybody laughed. I've had a couple of those at like funerals. Just, uh, we were like, crying. Just, we went from crying, crying to crying, laughing. I did that one time, uh, a buddy of mine, his dad died, and it was just one of those fucking, you know, tragic, you know, we were young, and he died out of nowhere, and the kid had already lost his mom, it was fucking horrible, and uh, so it was pouring raining, to make it even worse, fucking, like, the, remember the movie Seven? It was raining like that, okay? Yeah, yeah. So we, we you know, go, you know, go through the service, and now they're gonna, you know, put the guy in the ground, and the guy was so popular, I mean, there was just a zillion people there, so they had, like, one of these, you know, one of those pop tents with no sides to it mm -hmm. so there's so many fucking people everybody's jamming in there me and my buddy can't get in you know we're on the outer ring we're just getting rained on and shit and my other asshole friend is just inside the tent and he's sitting there and we're all crying and stuff and they're bringing the body down and all of a sudden just from the weight of the rain like this little like canal started pouring down and just missing my friend and my buddy in the middle of crying was standing rain just reached up and adjusted it so it went all over his coat but he had like this wool kind of coat on so he couldn't feel it at first right. and dude I'm talking crying laughing yeah yeah just crying because it was so sad and that, that's the thing too that I never thought people ever understand yeah. about comics when they have a distasteful joke like if, if a boat sinks there's a plane crash and you have a joke. Yeah. They always think it's because you're insensitive, and they sometimes don't understand that it's it's a defense mechanism. It's where twisting it's like, the pain. Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling something bad. I don't want to feel it. And then you you, tr you make a fucking joke, yeah. and then you're laughing because you don't want to feel that. So you're actually doing it because you can. It's kind of a, I, I think, like a, form, it's like a dysfunction. It's kind yeah. of a form of dysfunction. Well, like the pedophile like, jokes. We all know how terrible that is. And yet, well, you know, I think you there's twist instances. It, but, you could, <laughs> but you could twist it around. <laughs> I usually bring it back on myself, you know. Mm -hmm. Like uh, one joke that says, you know, uh, what about me, father? I wasn't hot enough for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. To make it me, I wouldn't I want to hurt a kid. But there's a good example of something that's caused so many people so much pain. And I'm not just talking about the physical pain. Yeah. But, um, you know, we do. Oh, I mean, no, you, you end somebody's life. when you. That's why that, that Sandusky guy, yeah, you know, like th they shouldn't put those. They, they should automatically get the death penalty just immediately. Yeah. It's all, they take them out. Dude, if you got a rabid dog in your neighborhood, you fucking put it down. Those sex offender guys, that's it. Because all those people that that dude fucked with, yeah, it's like that's going to now affect – you want to talk about dating strippers, like how that's yeah. going to affect who they pick, you know, who they pick as a, uh, a, a wife, how they treat their kids. They might they, – they, 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 there's a chance that they, they could, you know, sometimes – I don't know if it happens. I'm, I'm going to go beyond my intelligence on this shit, which isn't too hard to do. But I, all I know is that that's generations of therapy. Yeah, because of the abuse of the, – the, Yeah. They, they repeat the, the – whoever – Yeah, and those guys – They don't get therapy. Yeah, and you, you can't put that guy in jail and like – I mean, how long – like you're attracted to what you're attracted to and no amount in a cell. Well, especially Like, Dom, if they suck you in a cell, how long before you wouldn't like big-titted strippers? You'd come out 80 years later. I'm Dom. I, I won't wait. Get, yeah. Bring me to some big-titted stripper. <laughs> those guys like eight-year-olds. You stick yeah. them in a cell and you talk to them. You try to undo it and show them an adult. 
they're, they're wired that way. That's it. How just fucking, fucking sick just, is just that? Put him, put him down. I, it's it's you horrific. Know? It's why I don't believe in a higher power that gives a fuck. Well, uh, that's a whole different subject, but I understand that. But do you hear that pedophile joke about? Uh, you might have to tell a joke, joke. No, not at all. It's uh, two guys sitting on a bench. I see an eleven-year-old boy walk by. One guy, pedophile, he says to the other one, he goes, boy, he must have been hot back in the day. <laughs> 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 he must have been something back in the day. <laughs> oh, that's fucking twisted. Yeah.